G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the set byte instructions. As soon as I find my pen. Oh, here we go. Okay, set byte. Um, the set byte instructions are a family of instructions, much like the conditional moves and the conditional jumps. And what you usually see is uh, the whole collection of families called uh, set cc. So all of the set byte instructions are called set cc, and you exchange the cc just here for whatever um, condition you want to uh, set the byte to. All right. So before we start talking about set byte, I want to talk about um, bool, the C++ bool. Um, it's really a byte, and one means true and zero means false. Whoops. Whoops, whoops. Okay, so when you define something as um, something like this, bool b equals true, in C++ what you're actually doing is setting a, a byte in memory to one, and something like uh, b equals false, uh, what you're actually doing there is setting uh, the same byte to zero. Okay, so one means true, zero means false. Actually, um, any non-zero value means true, so we could say something like um, int i equals 100, and we could say if i, um, maybe c out good or something, meant to be um, inverted commas, Okay, so uh, this is non-zero at the moment, i, so uh, that would result in printing out good, whereas if we had something like uh, i equals zero, and if i see out no good, so i in this particular instance is zero, and zero always means false, so this condition here would fail and it wouldn't print anything out. Does that make sense? Um, I think it's best to use just a byte, and one for true and zero for false, but um, it's good to know also that the uh, current compiler that we're using, any non-zero value, be it an integer, a byte, whatever, any non-zero value means true. Okay, so this is really what the um, set byte instructions are for. What happens is we go something like um, set cc, and then we've got either register or mem 8, only 8 bits a byte, and what it means is um, set op1 to 1 if condition passed, else set op1 to 0. So this pretty much just sets this operand that we pass it to 1 if this condition is true, otherwise it sets it to 0. So this is absolutely perfect for um, dealing with C++'s boolean values. Now we're going to go through the conditions. I know that I went through them in previous tutorials when we were talking about the conditional moves and conditional jumps and the compare instruction, but we'll just write them out again. Hopefully I can make it really clear this time um, by trying something new. What I'm going to do is split the conditions into signed conditions, unsigned conditions, and then conditions that you can use for both. Okay, so these, the values that I'm going to write over here on the uh, left uh, what you replace the CC with when you do a set byte instruction. Okay, so first of all, signed. I should, maybe I'll just write signed. Maybe I'll get rid of this O as well. Oh, very good. Okay, these are signed conditions. O slash NO. Uh, this is overflow. And this is not overflow. And the overflow flag is set when um, there's been a signed overflow, pretty much. So if you've gone from positive to negative, or from negative to positive, from an add or a compare instruction, then um, yeah, the overflow flag will be set. So you can do um, set O to mean set when the, the overflow flag is 1, o F equals 1, or set NO to mean the overflow flag is 0. Alrighty, so something like um, just set OAL 
AL will become 1 if the overflow flag is 1, otherwise OL will become 0, AL will become 0, sorry, and set NO AL will do exactly the opposite. Alright, I think, I think we've got the point now. I think we can just fly through the rest of the um, things to replace the CC with. Okay, so the next one is S slash NS, and this is the sign flag. Uh, S is for the sign flag being 1, set when the sign flag is 1, and NS is set when the sign flag is 0. So the sign flag will be 1 if the previous result was uh, negative, otherwise the sign flag will be 0. Okay, so you can use that to test uh, if your result was negative or positive. Beautiful. Alright, so L slash N G E. Now here's where things get sort of slightly interesting. Um, that's an L just there. For many of these conditions, there's a couple of ways to write them. So less than is the way I always use, but you can also use NGE to mean not greater or equal. Less than. So this will set the, uh, or the condition will pass if the first operand of a compare was uh, less than the second. And we've also got NL slash GE, which is uh, not less than or greater than or equal to. And I've also got what's it L E and uh, uh, what's N G is uh, less or equal. So if operand one was less or equal to operand two, um, what the, usually you put this uh, set thing after a um, a comp instruction. So we do something like comp A X B X and set LE AL or something like that so yeah All right. and there's also G which is the same as NLE which is uh, greater than or in other words not less or equal exclamation mark so that's all of the signed conditions we go over the page, we'll have a look at some of the uh, unsigned conditions. So these are ones that you use with numbers if the numbers are unsigned. Okay, we've got B slash C slash N A E. B slash C slash N A E. Okay, this means below, which happens to be exactly the same as if the carry flag is set. Um, so below for unsigned and the carry flag being set are exactly the same thing and it also happens to have the uh, other mnemonic NAE to mean not above or equal. Um, it's arbitrary but um, in assembly below and above mean unsigned and less and greater than mean signed. Alrighty, so just something you've got to get used to. I don't know who invented it. Uh, NB, NC or AE Okay, this is not below, slash um, not carry. So this condition will pass if the carry flag is zero, or in other words, if the first operand was not below the second, unsigned. Um, all right, the next one, BE slash NA is um, below or equal, or in other words, not above. Okay, that's an O, it's supposed to be an O. And the final one for unsigned is NBE, which means uh, not below or equal, or in other words, above. Alrighty, so that's the unsigned ones. Um, use below and above for unsigned, and uh, greater and less for signed. And if we go over the page, we'll have a look at the final ones uh, before we get onto it little demo about why this instruction is useful. So this is both signed and unsigned. Okay, so the first one is Z slash E, which is tests for equality or zero. We've already been through why the zero flag is set when numbers are equal. But um, the next, NZ, New Zealand, and E 
this is not equal sort of slash not zero flag so this is the exact opposite if the two parameters in a compare won't equal um, this test will pass and um, then we've got our weird little parity flag PE parity even so this condition passes if there's an even number of one bits in the low uh, byte of the answer parity um, and the other one is of course PO parity odd um, so it's actually PF equals 1 this is PF equals 0 ok so you can also yeah you can f use the parity flag to set bytes as well Alrighty, so what we have to do is actually uh, go through exactly why this instruction is useful, set byte. So what I'm going to do here is just write out a little uh, C++ function. Pretty simple really, and you'd never, you'd never really use this in C++, but just as, as an example, is less int a int b. Okay, so it's just a little function and it returns true if uh, the first parameter you give it is less than the second, otherwise it returns false. Okay, so we're going to make a few assembly versions of this and uh, see which one of them I like best. Okay, so first of all, the, f the first way that we might think of as uh, programming this in assembly is is less, that's a proc, um, using jumps. So this is probably the most obvious way. Um, comp ECX, EDX, and JL to maybe um, ECX is smaller. Um, mov AL zero ret ECX is smaller. Mov AL one and ret and finally down here we've got is less and p okay so this is the first way that I don't know you might think of it um, using a jump so all we've done here we've been past these two a and b in uh, ECX and EDX as per usual with the C fast call calling convention and we compare them both and we jump if ECX is smaller down here but uh, if ECX is not smaller, then we move into AL, the value false, um, and we return that. So if you're returning bool, uh, it uses AL. Set AL to 0 if you want to return false, and set AL to 1 if you want to return true. Okay, but if the jump is taken, so he goes boing down to here. Um, yeah, we move into AL1 to say that our ECX was smaller, and we return true. So this is one way to do the uh, above in assembly, but this is a really bad way to do it. And the reason that it's bad is because there's jumps right here. Bad news, bad news. Okay, we don't like jumping, and how do we get out of it? Well, one way to get out of it, and this is, I'll just put up here, this is bad. Three exclamation marks, and I'll say here this is better. Okay, so I won't, I won't write out is less proc and is less np, we'll just assume that they're there. What I'm going to do is rewrite this middle part, the uh, actual code to the function, and in the better version, we'll use um, conditional conditional moves. Okay, so this is much quicker. Let's see how we would use this. mov ax0, mov r8w1, um, perform the compare, Oops, E C X and E D X C Mov L A X R A W. Correct. Okay, so these five lines just here um, produce exactly the same effect as all of these lines here, but they don't have a jump. Instead we use a conditional move. Let's have a bit of a look. So this will be much quicker, this version here, much quicker. Um, the first thing that we do is move zero into AX which is the same as moving um, false into AL. 
So we're using AX and R8W in this particular example because the C MOV conditional moves don't work with uh, bytes, so we've got to use uh, whole words. Anyway, we assume that it's false. We assume that um, B is greater than or equal to A. And the next thing that we do is move the um, value for true into R8W, just in case we need to uh, change our assumption. Then we perform the comparison of ECX and EDX. And if ECX was uh, smaller, then we uh, conditionally move 1 into AX, which is the same as moving true into AL, and uh, we ret. So if ECX wasn't smaller, then the answer that we moved into AX, i.e. 0, will stay there, and uh, by the time we get down here, we'll return false. Okay, so this is a really good way to do it. Uh, it's going to perform much quicker than this one, because it's got no jump in it. Okay, but we can get even quicker. Okay, so these five instructions just here aren't quick enough for us. Let's see how um, set byte makes this really gun. Uh, I'll put best over here. Okay, this is the best version. There we go, folks. Simple as that. Three lines. Perform the comparison. Um, move 0 or 1 into AL based on whether or not ECX was less and RET. So set byte instruction just here um, saves us, what, two lines. It's even quicker than the conditional move in this particular instance. Really gets us out of a jam. Okay, so that's just one little example of where you would use um, set byte. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting instruction, so just put that up your sleeve and thank you for listening. See ya.